Hello and welcome back to Shapes.io. As you read from the title, you know that this is tic-tac-toe. Now you may recall that I planned to do a series on this, but then I thought that'd be too short. So then I decided to just do it in one video, but the video was pretty laggy, so I decided to just not post it. And now we have this. So I have the complete game of tic-tac-toe here, and I'll be showing it off today. You may have noticed that some of the UIs have changed. Like as you see over here, these will look different if you press escape. You have these little symbols over here. And also the bottom bars is completely gray. I don't know why, but I guess that is how it is. So there has been a few updates, some of which include the virtual stacker and the virtual painter, which I'm pretty excited about. I might do some things in the future with those, but I won't be going over any of that today because I'll be showing you this, this complete game of tic-tac-toe. I'll show you how it works and then I'll go over the parts explaining how each component works. So let's get to it. So first, let's see it in action. So as we uh, exit the wire layer, you see that we have the uh, inputs, the display, this is the turn display, and this is the wind detection. So X's, uh, X's are represented by stars and O's are circles, as you may have guessed. So let's uh, try it. So let's say we're X, right? We wanna go first, maybe we go in the center. See, it switches turns, X is here. Maybe O can go in the corner, and uh, X can go uh, here, right? And then maybe uh, O goes here, and X goes here. As you see, uh, this is a little trap where X has two ways to win, so no matter where O goes, X wins. And as you see, this is the win display, and you see X wins. And also we have this reset button. So it's pretty simple, because it's, it's just tic-tac-toe, but the, uh, some of the parts are kind of interesting to see. So let's go to that. First, we start off with the inputs. So as you see, we take an input from each button. We have to, I have to use some OR corners because uh, obviously you can't put these wires there and there and still connect them. So I have these inputs. These gates I'll go over later. But over here, we have our first cross section. So this, this is just a bunch of delay. And I'll show you why, because you see each of these lines goes into this uh, one tick pulse. These are one tick pulsers, where when it receives a uh, signal, it will pass through this gate. But then one tick later, it will turn off this not gate, meaning this entire thing will turn off. And that passes a one tick pulse. This just signifies that a move has been made. So once that happens, we reach our turn system. And I'll actually just demonstrate that right now. I'll simulate a move. I can just make this a uh, one tick pulser like uh, this. So as you see, right now the uh, so the way the turn system works is that currently it says it's O's turn even though it's the first move. But the way I've done it, the simplest way I could think of is that if it's this detects if there's an O input, then it will just convert it to an X and vice versa. So right now it's displaying X. The reason it has to be backwards is because once a pulse is sent through, this will switch before it actually gets read by and uh, inputted into the memory. So as you see, if we send a pulse through this, you see right now it's O, and that's not working. Oh yeah, because this is a conflict. So let's just remove that line actually. So if we send a pulse, now you see we remove this and the, uh, the XOR stays on. This is just a little XOR loop. It acts like a T flip-flop. And uh, we just have some delay here. So the way this works is that either this one will be on or this one will be on. Over here, this is just uh, six ticks of delay. This is uh, I, this is the amount you need. So uh, because if there's less delay, then this will actually write the wrong shape into the memory. And then these gates, what they do is when a input is uh, inputted, so let's say this bottom line, we follow it, and it uh, it activates this gate, and now this gate will output the current shape, and it will be one gate at a time. Next, we move on to the memory. So memory may look complicated, but it's not too. It's very easy to understand. So once this gets inputted as a shape, right? You follow this path, this bus and it gets put into one of these nine memory cells, which represent the squares on the grid. So let's try this actually. So let's say it's 
Okay, let's reset it. This is the, oh yeah, the reset system. The way this works is that once this button is pressed, well, first for the turn resetting, it will just send a uh, signal of zero. So if a one is in this looping, it will be a, it will turn to conflict and then it'll just de default to zero. So that's pretty simple. So let's say X goes in the corner, right? So you see it passed, well, you couldn't see that well because it was a one tick pulse, but uh, the this goes on. And this is a little shut off system. I'll show you that later. Or actually I can explain it now, but you'll see. So this passes through, right? It, gets, it activates this gate, and as you see, even after the button turns off, this stays on, because if we follow it here, up to here, this is a memory loop. It's just a gate looping on itself. And also, it continues, so it gets stored here, and it keeps going, and this is some wind detection logic, but also it gets sent down to here into the correct spot on the display. So as you see, each of these memories also has this uh, fourth line. Now this is just to control the reset. If I want to reset the board, the way this works is that this is just default on, but when I reset it, as you see, this just turns off and then all the gates turn off, meaning the board is completely reset. So let's try this again. X goes there. See, this one stays on. And since this memory cell stays on, what happens is that these not okay, we have this row of not gates and this pretty this pretty much checks if there is if that cells already filled and if the cells already filled then it won't allow any more inputs so if let's say o tries to go and wants to go in the same spot tries to override it you see it just doesn't work because the gate corresponding to that square is turned off because it's set in the memory so that's just a simple memory lock Right, so we covered most of it. Past the memory, you see, we just have these lines go down. And finally, we have the wind detection. Now, wind detection may seem a bit complicated. It's very simple. It's just hard-coded because there's not that many. There's only like, uh, you have three rows, uh, three columns, and two diagonals. So there's only eight different ways to win. So that's not too hard to program in. So all I've done is you take the, I have these comparers and you see this compares the bottom uh, left. This compares the bottom left and middle left. And this compares the middle left and top left. And see, it's to ask if these are the same, if, if these are all the same shape, then it will output a one. And this just reads the turn signal. So if a one's outputted, then it will uh, turn this gate on and now this turn signal, which is X, so you see if X1, it would pass through here and let up X. So let's just show that. Let's just make some moves. Uh, X goes here, maybe it goes here, and X wins. So you see, this turns on. Uh, let's see, this one. So this one is for the left column. So it goes, or the middle one, I mean. The middle column, so that turns on. The reason these two knock gates are here is because let's say the middle one, let's say, actually I'll just demonstrate it. Pretend, okay, X goes here. Uh, actually, okay, turn this off. X goes here, O goes here, and X goes here. Actually, I think I need the other order, yeah. So X here, O here, and X here. So as you see, we're actually, uh, uh, for this to work, we actually need to win. So we do something like this. And uh, let's say O goes here. And X goes here. So this is winning for X. But as you see, this conflicts. The reason why is that for this middle column, which is represented by this one, you see the bottom middle and the, the center of the board, both are the same shape. That means this comparer outputs a one. And that sends a zero signal through the gate. And, but this one is zero because it is receiving an X and an O, meaning they aren't the same, so it outputs zero. So now this uh, main line has a zero input on it. And now we also have this winning uh, configuration. So this one outputs a one. So if you have a zero and a one, that conflicts. 
And the way to solve that is just I added a double knock gate. And pretty much a, the way knock gates work is that, or any gate, any gate will turn off once it receives a conflict. So this still works. It checks. So pretty much the memory or the wind detection will turn on if there is a one or a conflict. So that solves this problem. Another way to solve it would just be to have a, you have like gates uh, like this, where as you see, even if this is outputting a zero, this just, uh, this needs a one to actually turn on. So you could solve it that way, but I did it the easier way with the double knock gate. So that is actually everything. That is the complete tic-tac-toe board. So that is all for this video. I know it was a short one, but I hope you enjoyed it. As I said earlier, the reason I uh, posted this is because uh, on screen right now, the recording of like the building it label was a bit laggy, so I couldn't actually build it. post it. But I do have plans in the future. Me and some friends are working on something that involves a little AI for this tic-tac-toe game. Stay tuned for that if you want to see it. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Later.